Hi there and welcome to this day in history for January 15th. January 15th is the 15th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar with 350 days remaining to the end of the year or 351 in leap years. In 2024, January 15th falls on a Monday and according to the Uniform Monday Holiday Act, this is a federal holiday in honor of Martin Luther King Jr. More about that in a little bit though. Today's word is loan word. Every day we talk about some word, its definition, how it came to be, and so on. Many words that we talk about have their deep origins in other languages and have made their ways to us over time through various languages. Sometimes, though, we just start using a word from another language as it is, as if we're borrowing that word from that language. We call such a word a loan word. Loan word is a noun, and it's a word that has been taken from another language and at least partly naturalized. Some examples of loan words are guru, dharma, and mantra from Sanskrit, cabana, paseo, and mesa from Spanish, wunderkind from German, <laughs> haiku, sensei, and bonsai from Japanese, jungle and juggernaut from Hindi. This is by no means an exhaustive list. There are so many more. Languages have been borrowing words from each other for maybe as long as there's been language, but first known use of the term loan word is 1869. Loan word. Today's word loan word was suggested by YouTube viewer at DJ Alexer. Thanks, DJ. And if you have a word you'd like us to examine in this Word of the Day segment, drop it in the comments and we'll take a look at it. And with that, we've mentioned Otho and the Year of Four Emperors several times in previous episodes. Just a couple weeks ago, Galba became emperor on January 1st after Nero's death. Some legions of the military didn't want Galba, refused to swear loyalty to him, and demanded that a new emperor be chosen. Now, a thing that emperors in that time would do was to adopt someone as their successor, and Galba had done this. He didn't choose Otho, though, and Otho was pretty hot about it. <laughs> Otho was angry that he had been passed over for adoption, so he organized a conspiracy against Galba. With this conspiracy, along with the unrest and unhappiness of several legions, Otho was able to arrange the assassination of Galba and Galba's chosen successor and appoint himself as emperor, becoming the second emperor in the year of four emperors. Unfortunately, he didn't know what he was in for and the job was a lot bigger and more involved than he had anticipated. His reign as the second emperor in the year of four emperors will only last 91 days and I'm sure we'll talk about that again when it rolls around. This is the birthday of minister and civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr., born Michael King Jr. on January 15, 1929. His father, a Baptist minister, had come to admire the work of Martin Luther and in 1934 had their respective names changed from Michael and Michael Jr. to Martin Luther King Sr. and Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King Jr. became a Baptist minister interested in equal rights just like his dad. Martin Luther King Jr. recommended and used nonviolent resistance and nonviolent civil disobedience in order to effect change. He oversaw the 1955 Montgomery bus boycott and helped organize two of the three Selma to Montgomery marches in 1965. He won the 1964 Nobel Peace Prize. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated in 1968 at the age of 39. He was awarded a Presidential Medal of Freedom and a Congressional Gold Medal, both posthumously, and an American federal holiday was established to honor him in 1986. Martin Luther King Day occurs the third Monday in January, and in 2024, that third Monday also happens to be his actual birthday. Martin Luther King Jr., the Owens, Illinois Technical Center building, touted as the first all-glass windowless building, was completed on January 15, 1936 for the Owens, Illinois Glass Company in Toledo, Ohio. 
This is the birthday of Ronnie Van Zant, born Ronald Wayne Van Zant on January 15, 1948. He was the original lead vocalist and founding member of the Southern rock band Leonard Skinner. As a youngster, he was a big fan of Muhammad Ali, such that Ronnie thought about becoming a boxer. He also played American Legion baseball as a teenager and gave thought to becoming a professional baseball player. Somewhere along the way, he formed a band with some friends, and they went by several names, before settling on the name Leonard Skinner as a tongue-in-cheek homage to their gym teacher, Leonard Skinner, drawing him into some unintended fame of his own, but that's another story for another day. <laughs> the band became very well known for such songs as I Ain't the One, Tuesday's Gone, Give Me Three Steps, Simple Man, Sweet Home Alabama, and their signature song, Free Bird. In 1977, Leonard Skinner released their fifth studio album called Street Survivors. They were on a tour, a tour they called Tour of the Survivors. And just three days after the release of the Street Survivors album, on their way to the next show, the chartered plane they were on experienced difficulties and attempted an emergency landing, but crashed. Ronnie Van Zant, guitarist Steve Gaines, and backing vocalist Cassie Gaines, the band's road manager, and both pilots all perished in that crash, and most of the other 20 people on the plane were severely injured. It was a terrible, heartbreaking day indeed. Ronnie Van Sant was 29. Now, if you're curious about what I might have talked about in a previous episode for this day in history, I'll leave a link for you. Being Ronnie Van Zant's birthday, we'll talk about a Leonard Skinner song. Free Bird was their signature song, but I don't think I could really talk about that one without becoming emotional as I associate that song with my late brother, who also perished in a terrible accident at the age of 29. Leonard Skinner's biggest selling single was Sweet Home Alabama, but today I think we'll talk about a song called What's Your Name? What's Your Name was the first track on their album Street Survivors, released in October of 1977, and the single was released the following month. Written by Gary Rossington and Ronnie Van Zant, this song talks about life on the road for many touring bands. The part about getting kicked out of the bar was based on an actual event. The event from which these lyrics are taken didn't happen in Boise, Idaho, but when Ronnie found out his younger brother Donnie's band, 38 Special, was starting their first national tour in Boise, he changed the lyrics to indicate <laughs> Boise, Idaho. Classic Southern Rock. What's Your Name by Leonard Skinner. Link in the description. And I think that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with a link in your email, messaging, or social media. If you enjoy this series, check out the playlist that contains these videos, and I'll put a link to that in the description. The description lives on YouTube, so for other platforms, I'll include a link to my blog page that's called No Really. <laughs> you can also find me on Rumble, BitChute, and odyssey all those links in that description Alrighty, that's all i can think of right now thanks again and all see you next time this is the birthday I didn't get that could you try again i wasn't talking to you John me are you kidding me okay hold on we gotta make that be quiet you gotta read what's read the black part <laughs> hi there and welcome to this day in history for oh where's your microphone okay we don't want to say the same thing twice still recording that's great okay how about that <laughs> we'll have a lot to edit today cacophony is a sound <laughs> cacophony is a noun that you got to read it the right way let's start over <laughs> it 
it's eight o'clock, so all of the reminders are going to be dinging. I forgot to turn those off. <laughs> okay, stop it. Don't alienate people who can be helpful to you. Flinging happiness all over the place. All right, back to work. I think we got it this time.